here at Winsports.com and Any Here TV. I'm here at the Ben Center with Travis Wilson after a three-game sweep with Ball State. Travis, this isn't a conference game, but tell us a little bit about how this win's going to kind of push you through the end of conference. Um, our, as our coach has been saying, this game's like super important because of the way the new tournament format is that uh, non-conference matches are super important because you can lose a backdoor bid opportunity, so it's always good to play a Midwest school that you haven't seen before and make sure that we show that our conference is strong. Right. And as a redshirt senior on the team, you bring a lot of energy, fire, and leadership. What is your mindset kind of going into each of these last games? Um, definitely just like last time playing all these schools, you know, it's like just try to enjoy the moment and love the moment as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. And what's your goal kind of personally finishing out this season? Um, well, obviously the team goal is to win a national championship and for me just to contribute as much to the team as possible and just find any way to make us better as a whole. Yeah, and what do you think the biggest challenges are going to be for your team finishing out conference going into postseason? Uh, I think for us right now, challenge wise is ourselves. I mean, we just need to keep pushing ourselves to get better in practice and preparing for the games and keep keep sticking to the process and stay together and work hard. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm here with Michael Saeda. Michael, tell us a little bit about how this three game Super Bowl Ball State, you know, even though it's non-conference, tell us a little bit about how this is going to kind of help you through the rest of the season. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not a conference, but that's probably one of the most important things we're going to play a game like this because, you know, you can't take a team like this lightly because when you go and you look at the NCAA tournament and the selection committee and everything, you can't leave it at a conference play up to up for jeopardy, you know, for decision on anyone else. So when we came out of this match, we knew we were going to have to really apply the pressure quickly. Um, and, you know, we did from the service line. Uh, we have guys that can really just take teams out of the system, and once we do that, it becomes a simple game for us. And so that was, uh, that was the game plan. Execute. Yeah, definitely. And what happened in that second game, you know, it was kind of a battle towards the end. Was that you guys or did Ball State kind of step well, up? No, I mean, it was a little a bit of both. You know, we had our game plan, like I was saying, we didn't execute in certain narratives. We uh, we needed to make sure that our certain pass game was what was going to take us to the end, and we kind of slipped a little bit. But uh, at the same time, it's not a bad thing because, you know, we got into that moment where we needed to score points and we needed to win. So uh, when we were pushed like that, it was, it was a good test for us. Right. You know, it kept going, so it just teaches us that in transition game, we need to side out and take care of our business when we can. So glad we were able to pull that one out. Yeah, definitely. And as a setter on the team, you obviously have a huge role in every single point. Um, what's your mindset been for the offense this year? You know, it's kind of been a little bit of a professionalistic. I don't even know if that's a word, but it's kind of professional <laughs> to, to strive for. We played a, a team from Brazil this, yeah. year, this beginning of the year, and William, their setter, he kind of walks on the court, and his demeanor is the same the entire time. Right? He's leading his guys, and he has some phenomenal hitters, but it's just his game plan, and he's ready, and he does the same thing every time, and it's like nothing changes depending on the situation. So that's kind of what I've been striving to do. And when I have hitters like Andy Benz that are jumping at almost 12 feet, it really does make my job a lot easier. Uh, so just kind of executing what I can do, working as hard as I can do that, it's, it's been helping. And with only two losses in conference, you guys are in a pretty good place going into the end of conference. What do you think your greatest challenges are going to be to kind of finish conference and go into the season? Well, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of good teams left to play. You know, we're about to go and play that back in the gym, and they're a phenomenal team, a great blocking team. Uh, so we're going to really need to make sure that we apply pressure on the steady in that game. And then right after that, uh, after finals, we can go and we play like twice in the place. And so they haven't lost in, in two years at their house. And so I love that because yeah. we get to take it from them. So we, uh, we need to make sure that we stay consistent. You know, we're going to get tested, and that's important because you don't want to go to postseason not being tested. So uh, we look forward to that. And we just need to make sure that we're going to play and uh, we'll the team. Awesome. Thank you so much. And once again, I'm Ella Rosenfeld with UCIrvineSports.com and Annie Eater TV. It was a great three-game sweep of Ball State tonight in the Bren Center, and the Eaters will be back April 1st in the Bren for a conference game against CSUN. Thanks for watching.